What a treat it is for us this morning to have Satch Sullinger sitting down in the captain's chair mm -hmm. with us talking about this, the new book that's out, Winning with Purpose, Raising Our Game and Lifting Our Teammates on and off the court. This yeah. is awesome. Absolutely. Awesome uh, stuff. It's uh, what I founded, uh, my, my principles in coaching and mm -hmm. being a father, being a husband, being a community member, uh, everything I do. It's all about purpose. Goals are self-serving. And once you reach your goal, what do you do? Mm -hmm. But purpose, you can, you, can, you can always do something for mm -hmm. someone else. And uh, that's uh, uh, what the book is all about. It's a real motivational book, too, because you really not only tell people how to win with purpose, but to stop making excuses, which is something we hear so much of nowadays. Absolutely. I mean, the bottom line, I, I was raised by my, my grandparents. You know, my mom and, and my stepdad, uh, he was a great man. Uh, they had their family, and I, I lived with my grandparents during my formative years. And my grandfather taught me that you're in a world of either you did or you didn't. Mm -hmm. And all the conversation in between means absolutely nothing. Because at the end of all those excuses, the question that needs to be answered is, did you mm -hmm. or didn't you? And he's the one who taught me that, uh, you know, there's, there's no excuses. Either you either did or you didn't. Were you always going to write a book? I mean, every time I'm with you, I learn something. I learn some, some little nugget, uh, <laughs> a saying, a phrase, you know, some information I always take away from you. That's you, just the coach in you, the teacher in you. Is this an extension of you teaching and coaching? That is my grandfather and Pat Penn, my college coach, who, mm -hmm. who became part of my life, Pat Penn, after I had my uh, discretions with the law. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that, uh, when I thought I was a man, he's the one that made turned me into a man. Mm -hmm. He he finished the job that my grandfather had started all those years, and I didn't understand what my grandfather was talking about until Pat Penn kind of like tied the ends together for me. What did he tell you? Well, he re he rebuilt on the he built on the you know no excuses you know did you or didn't you mm -hmm. you know uh, you, you know potential. You know, saying you haven't reached your potential is a, is, a, is a positive way of making a negative statement. Mm -hmm. When someone says you have the potential to really be great, what they're really telling you, if you really listen to them, is you're not as good as you could be. Yeah. You yeah. are a living example of second chances. How yeah. does your book relate to um, your life examples of, of, of that second chance and then maybe what you also told your sons? Well, first of all, let me, let me tell you, I told my sons all about my past because I was born and raised right here in Columbus. And you know, there's always gonna be somebody out there that's gonna try to tell your son something about your dad. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want my, my sons to learn anything about the father from someone else. So I told my sons at early age about my discretions. And uh, so th that uh, is, is, is mainly the thing that, that was important to me is telling my boys. Mm -hmm. Second chance is this to me. When someone gives you a second chance, what they're doing, they're in a position to give you a second chance. That means that their whole life, everything they stood for, they're giving it to you that moment. And if you throw it away, you're throwing that person's value away too. Mm -hmm. And you know, Clifford, uh, Judge Clifford Rader He's the one that gave me the second chance. Uh, I was hired as East High School's coach uh, back in 83, and some people downtown were upset that I got the job. They wanted someone else to have it. And uh, they had a meeting uh, scheduled for 4 o'clock that afternoon to re you know, turn me into the state and revoke me from my past. And uh, Judge Rader was sick and mm. got up off of his deathbed. And he came down and he said, you know, when I gave you that second chance, you took advantage of it. He said, I'm expunging your record. And he expunged my record. At that point, do I throw everything that Judge Rader lived for down the tubes? I even got more, more grounded in, in my purpose. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Judge Rader you know, passed shortly after that. But from that point on, I, I became really committed to young people. And then, Here's the key thing about a second chance. When my discretions with the law in the past became an asset because I changed my heart. And once you change your heart, negatives become positives. So I was able to look at the young people in school 
and that really needed me. And uh, the old expression is, the kids you like least need you the most. <laughs> and the ones that everyone else didn't get along with used to be me. And I could go up to those kids and I could look at them and they could see in my eyes that I've been there. And the wall just dropped and there was a trust mm -hmm. that was there. And it helped me, you know, get through to some kids. And, yeah. and I couldn't save them all, but I saved the ones that I could. You mentioned brushes with the law. Jared's recent troubles up in Boston Absolutely. that have gone away now. Does that come up in the book? Can we look at uh, yeah, examples like that? Yeah, that's in the book. That's yeah. the delay of the book. Uh, the book was supposed to be out in early September. But with the incident in Boston, mm -hmm. I couldn't release that book and not have Jared's incident in there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and it's, you know, Jared has a real good... Uh, reply to all that and, and how, you know, you have to stay focused, you have to stay committed to your principles and you have to always hold yourself yeah. accountable and you have to watch and, and choose the people that you're around. We'll look forward to it. Yeah. Always no nonsense. You Sash are a Sellinger. true treasure for Central Ohio, Sash. It's been a pleasure having you here with us this morning and a lot of people will get a chance to meet him this week. You've got lots of book signings and book launches all week long. So yes, we're we, uh, I'm, I'm having a book, si a book launching on the 14th yep. at St. Stephen's Community Center from 6.30 to 8 p.m. And then on Saturday, uh, the 16th, I'm at Kroger's uh, Marketplace in Guyana from 9.30 to 11 a.m. Right. And then on Sunday, I'm at Starbucks in Bexley from 9 to 11. <laughs> and, and the reason I'm having it on Sunday I, I, I go to this Starbucks in Bexley, and it's like my home. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I made a lot of Jewish friends. And a lot of my Jewish friends, some of them can't do things on Saturday because of their religion. And so I'm gonna have a book signing on Sunday so that they, they can you know help me feel good about this book by being a part of it. Well, get out and get a signed copy, Winning with <laughs> Purpose. Thanks, Satch. Thank you very much Appreciate for having it. me. Thank you. Jennifer?